Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Now on the same day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And and Jesus said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that, he had, that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened to them on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take, bless, break, give. When you're in seminary and you study... um, the Gospels, and you study particularly the story, you study the feeding narrative of the loaves and fishes, you are, it's pointed out to you, uh, it's pretty basic seminary 101, the taking, the blessing, the breaking, the giving. Uh, it's Eucharistic language. It's what we do. We take the bread and the wine, and we break it and bless it, and we give it to you. Um, take bless, break, give, is the rhythm of of the Christian. Our lives are taken. uh, they're, they're, They're blessed, they're broken, and they're given. I might have even messed it up, the order. Take, bless, break, give. Take, break, bless, give. I might have screwed that up. 
because I'm regular. But the order's the same no matter how you, God takes your lives. Blesses, breaks, breaks, blesses, gives. The bookend is the, the taking and the giving. That seems to be what we're about. And so I'm curious about this current time, and I'm kind of tired of saying, I'm curious about this current time. I'm kind of tired of looking at this iPad and talking to you and saying, well, this is different. Easter was different. Easter was weird. Whenever you have something taken from you, it feels uh, like you've been robbed. Even though it's blessed, even though it's broken, even though it's given, you get something taken from you. I feel like Easter was taken from us. We all did okay. We did our best effort. But it was taken. It was taken by something that, what can you do? It's a virus. The best course of measure, the best measure is to mitigate it, to, to socially distance it from each other. And okay, we get that, but it was still taken from us. But I wonder about the blessing and the breaking and the giving. Or the breaking and the blessing and the giving. I wonder about switching the blessing and the breaking. It was taken from us and then it was broken. And the breaking piece of it hurt too. Easter was kind of broken. What we usually would do, we didn't do. Traditions were broken. Or it was blessed. We were blessed by it. Um, It was sort of a blessing to be able just to be at home with your people. Not have to worry about what you look like. And get all the kids dressed. So the blessing and the breaking are interchangeable, maybe. But here at the beginning of the great 50 days of Easter, here on the Wednesday after Easter, we got to move to the give. Our lives were taken from us. Our traditions were broken and blessed. What do we do with the new? What do we do now? We remember the road to Emmaus is what we do now. We remember who we are. We remember that this is what we are about. Here is my life. Take it. Use it. Use it and give it to others that they may have life. And so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. We have to take this blessing and we have to figure out how to give it away. Here's some ideas. Gather up 10 names of people you haven't talked to in at least 10 years and send them a letter. Here's some ideas. Whenever you think of somebody in your head, immediately reach out to them. Give of yourself differently in your house. Why are you getting so mad? Why are you so frustrated? We're all mad and frustrated. Nobody likes this. Flip it on its head. Find love. No matter where you are, whatever screen you're watching, whatever living room you're in, whatever situation, for Christians, we can take things, bless and break them, and give them back. So take your frustration and your anger, break it. Give love instead. Give forgiveness. 
give forbearance, give patience. Give what's been given to you. And maybe this broken Easter of ours really isn't broken but blessed. What it's really about. At least that's where I'm thinking. I'm reminded of what it's really about. How Jesus' life was taken, blessed and broken, broken and blessed, and given to you, to me, the whole world. Amen. Let us pray. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Look down, O Lord, from your heavenly throne and illumine this night with your celestial brightness that by night as by day your people may glorify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. And visit this place, O Lord, and drive far from it all snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace and let your blessing be upon us always through Jesus Christ our Lord. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep you. Amen.